So uh, you're very welcome, as I say. What we're going to do today is going to be workshop centric, uh, which is code for you're going to be doing a lot more of the work than me. Um, so I'm here to guide, support, cajole, encourage, do social work if need be, uh, and, and gentle uh, reminding and connecting where it can help as we go through today. So after I spoke with you last time, after we had the first session, and uh, we had Des uh, and Mark and I can't remember who else, was someone else, the guy from Intercom, John was in, apologies. Um, so what, what, what came back as feedback is that um, there's a lot of different things that we could talk to you about, and there's a lot of uh, expert opinion out there, but there's a, a variable level of maturity uh, or experience in the group in terms of your uh, currently considered sales and marketing processes. So uh, what Gary asked me to do today was to spend today with you absolutely anchoring those sales and marketing processes as they currently exist. So it's not a glamour parade, uh, it's, not a, it's not a best practice extrapolation session, it's not a pontification session. This is about working and sharing what your current sales and marketing processes are and try and help you leave today with either more robust sales and marketing processes uh, or at worst a clear understanding of what you should be doing to put those sales and marketing processes in play. Um, if we don't have, as a group, if we don't have those sales and marketing processes well-defined, robustly uh, challenged and shared with others, the danger is that we could talk to you from on high about a million things, which would be interesting and you know, maybe fun to get out of the office to spend some time doing, uh, but probably nowhere near as valuable as they would be if they were anchored on you know, what you're actually operating on in terms of sales and marketing processes in the business. So that's what today's about, and that's why we're doing today the way we're doing it. Uh, a lot of the rest of the sessions that you'll go through will have guest speakers come in and uh, share their thoughts, their experiences. Uh, there'll be a motivational element to that. Not that today won't be motivational or fun, uh, but they will be more about you know incrementing change or seismic shifting, depending on how impactful they are. Whereas today's going to be really sort of the boring bit of actually fessing up to uh, where you're at with your sales and marketing processes and sharing that proudly from the front of the class. Okay, so that's what today's about. Does that make sense so far? Okay, cool. Uh, I've been duly cautioned about my language, so I'll try and, I'll try and stay on track. Um, if, if any of you see me straying too close to the dark side and gonna get in trouble, uh, please shout at me, interrupt me, or help me, or, or knock me off track, or calm me down. Uh, sometimes I'll need more coffee, or sometimes less. So, um, how we've chunked up today. So, in, in the morning part of today, what we're going to do is, is we're going to actually take a look at what sales and marketing processes are. Uh, let's just demystify it. For some of you, this might feel like 101 stuff, uh, basic introductions, uh, concepts that you might have seen before. Uh, that's really to get everybody under the one language set. Then what we're going to do is uh, do a little bit of sharing. So in company, between peers, and then uh, from on high, uh, sharing with the group, uh, with you know, that peer learning, peer feedback coming from the group to, to challenge, encourage, and support uh, what you believe you uh, currently have in place. Um, coffee will be arriving. Coffee, I'm happy, will flow with. We will take a break here for phone calls uh, at 11. Uh, there's an hour at lunch. Again, if you could do the majority of your phone calls and emails uh, through that, that would be great. Um, in the afternoon, we're going to get into some more detail about funnels, cost of acquisition, and lifetime value. Uh, we'll go into some more complex metrics there as well that you might or might not be familiar with. Uh, <coughs> if we're losing anybody as we get into the latter stages of today, we'll, 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 we'll try and slow down um, so that we bring most of the room with us. So I've, I've shrunken all of the things that we could be doing in sales and marketing and metrics down to what we would believe your, your companies either need to have right now or should already have in place and be reasonably well experienced. So for some of you, this will be about enhancements and iterations. For others of you, you'll be looking and going, okay, we actually don't have any of this in place. We need to, we need to get cracking with it. Uh, it's a safe room. Uh, we're, being, we're being filmed. Uh, but uh, when we get into workshop format, uh, we might just have to make a call, Stephen, in terms of uh, what everyone's happy with sharing and not sharing, because some of the information will be, will be sensitive. So it's a safe room. 
but we'll just be, I'll try and be the custodian of what we're doing on video uh, in case. Okay, we, we can edit it all out. Okay, cool. So there'll be nothing uh, that is company specific that will go outside of this environment. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. All right, let's get started then. Any questions so far? No? no? Not awake yet? Totally awake, scared, intimidated. Um, okay, so some of the stuff I touched on last time. So the goal here is to create some machinery. And, and why do we think it's important to have machinery? Well, for most of you who want to scale or are in the process of scaling, you cannot scale elements of your business by delivering them in an ad hoc manner, whether that's operations, finance, cash collection, customer support, sales, marketing, R&D, development, anything else. So the things that you can get away with when you're in cottage industry mode, you will not get away with if you want to scale out the business. So I have the utmost of respect for the things that you have to do in scramble mode, and that's fine. I've been there, I've lived it, uh, I'm living it today. Uh, I'm, I'm a participant uh, rather than a, uh, an academic in this space. So. As you transition from cottage mode into scale out mode, you absolutely have to make some decisions, put some structures in place, put some resources in place, and have people follow consistent processes. If you don't do that, you'll have chaos. So if I, if I just do a first sort of, again, we're all, we're all, we're all friends here. Uh, who thinks they're in sort of cottage industry scramble mode? And who thinks, okay, cottage industry, okay. So hands up if you think you're in cottage industry mode. Okay, for everyone else, who, for, okay, so anyone who didn't put their hand up to that, could you put your hand up, please? Okay, so who thinks they're in robust scale-out mode with defined processes in play? Can you just have a show of hands of that? Nobody, okay. We're transitioning. Yeah. Transitioning, okay. Okay, so that space between cottage industry, which is randomized chaos, and then being HubSpot or Marketo at the other end of the spectrum. You know, where are folks? So for you folks that are transitioning or somewhere in the middle. Closer to cottage industry than HubSpot or Growth, anyway. Okay. Other thoughts, opinions, you guys? Um, we have some processes in place, but uh, they could definitely do with improvement to, to okay. bring us over to the HubSpot space. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to ask for volunteers yet, so it's okay at this stage. Um, Okay, does anybody think, think they're close to the HubSpot Marketo automated world? Okay, can I ask why not? This is discussion mode, right? If I had a chair, I'd be saying, but you probably not see it. You haven't? Have you tried to prove it's scalable? Okay, so you're experimenting? Yeah, we're experimenting. But we have a model that works, but we're experimenting whether we can scale the model that works. Okay. So when you think of how you're spending your sales and marketing dollars at the minute, how much is being spent on executing, just proportionally roughly, how much is spent executing current mode and how much is being spent experimenting scale out mode? Doesn't no, sorry, that's okay. So, so spend hundred grand in a month, spend hundred grand hundred grand next month, hundred twenty grand a month after, hundred thirty grand a month after. Okay. You know what hundred grand is delivery. Yeah. I don't know if I I don't know if I spent two hundred grand. Okay. Would I be able to would I be able to scale it? Okay. And thank you for sharing this. Okay, so this is good. Right. So what I want to do is demystify some of this. So would you say that you're consciously experimenting with the scale out model or are you incrementally tweaking what you currently have in play? Both. You're doing both. Okay, so again, I come in peace, right? So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna robustly challenge as we go through, just, just, just to make sure we're in the same place. So I think that my assumption from what you said, which could be wrong, but my assumption from what you said is that your scale out will be in the in the creation or execution or monetizing additional channels. Okay. 
Okay, that sounds like incrementing rather than looking at what scale is. So scale for me, okay, okay, so this is okay, it could just be language. So, so scale for me is, you know somewhere in your business plan where you have the, you know, when you're at the far end of the hockey stick and everything's happening almost by osmosis and we're in the stratosphere, we now need to change the, the, the sort of um, metrics that we're using on, on the axis to make everything fit in. You know, have you a clear view in your head of what that sales and marketing model Our looks like? Marketing is reactive in that it's paid digital. Okay. So rather than outcome selling, because it's paid digital, I don't know how much the demand is in the marketplace. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. So that's not a, and, and thank you genuinely for sharing, that's not an uncommon approach for companies that are exiting cottage mode and are moving into that hinterland somewhere between uh, cottage mode and scale. Uh, at, at, at scale, uh, typically companies are in, in HubSpot Marketo land. Uh, if you remember Mark Roberts when he, he spoke last time, talked about all of their history and their learning and what they've done with the content. Um, I mean, the, the place where they're at at the minute, you know, where they've got a, a cost of acquisition, you know, ratio versus lifetime value of about, depending on what way they're measuring it or metricizing it, somewhere between 7.6 and 8.9. You know, it, it's massive. They've got it. That's got it. What that basically means is for every dollar they spend, uh, they're, they're getting eight or nine back. So they've got it. So they're at scale out mode. Um, the other end of the spectrum in cottage mode is, you know what, customers, we love them. We take them. They sort of want what we have. We might be still tweaking. We might still be looking for product market fit. Uh, we haven't quite got it yet, but Jesus, we found something that, apologies, we found something that sort of works. Uh, so we'll do some more of it and see does that work some more, and then we'll start to tweak and iterate that. So one of, the, one of the really, really important challenges as you look to build your business is to understand where you are in that development cycle <coughs> so that you're not crazily uh, investigating and researching with quants what your sales and marketing processes will look like at full maturity, but neither are you, you know, trying to spin the wheels faster in a gear that will not take you to the promised land. So that's a really, really hard thing to do, particularly if you're living in a world where cash is tight, you know, you're squeaking between investment rounds, you know, every hire is a critical hire, you know, the, the dollars are tight, uh, the finance guys are beating you savagely, uh, and the product guys just want to spend more and more money on code and development. So it's really, really hard to get that balance right. So, you know, a, a, usual, a usual good way to identify who's responsible um, for the sales and marketing um, scale out model, just like who's going to own that, is to pick somebody to do it, like pick a person. So I'd ask you just to reflect on who in the business currently, if anybody, is worrying about the scale-out model. And if nobody is, that's okay. And if the time's not right for it, that's okay as well. But more and more what you're gonna see, if any of you are in investment rounds or talking to investors, more and more they're gonna start talking about uh, that very point. They're gonna ask you that question. I've seen it happen now quite, I was, I was in San Fran uh, at the end of January, uh, and I've seen about seven out of 10 asked it. Uh, just quite blandly, okay, so who owns the scale-out sales and marketing processes? Uh, and after a little bit of sort of verbiage exchange, uh, the usual answer was uh, nobody except for one of the companies, and you know, they moved on to the next question. For the companies that couldn't answer the question, uh, the investment discussion changed from Series B, Series A to supersede or mezzanine, maybe, or else just no. <laughs> So what a, lot of, what a lot of investors are working out is that as you try and reach the scale out place, if you haven't worked out the sales and marketing machinery for scale out, or you haven't allocated someone the responsibility of working it out, you're probably not gonna get there. You're probably not gonna get there. You might get there by luck or osmosis, but you probably won't get there unless somebody's really consciously thinking about it. So have a think about it, whether it's your jobs as CEOs, marketeers, uh, engineers, developers, PMs, whatever tag you want to give yourself, somebody needs to work that out. Otherwise, it won't happen by itself. So it's, it, it, it's interesting that you know, you've got to look after the day job, you've got to keep the wheels turning, and then you've got to start thinking about how you build that machinery, which you know, end to end can look like that, but you know, as you take it out, it's going to start looking like uh, a variant of old world selling processes. This is for the older folks in the room. Uh, Without being ageist, anyone who's from a sales and marketing background will have seen these sorts of processes. And I, I, I flipped these past you very glibly last time. Um, but today what we're going to do is we're actually going to work them out, what they are for your companies. So 
I'd like you to think of it first off in current mode, in current operating mode. So we're going to try and put some structure around your current marketing and selling process stages. And then after that, we're going to look at what scale out looks like. It might be the same, they might be different. So uh, what I'm going to ask you to do shortly is to start thinking about how you currently describe these processes. And I'm going to ask you to create these in either technology or in paper and be sharing them with the room. And the idea behind the sharing is for those who are uh, not so far ahead to be able to learn from the folks who are a bit further ahead and for the folks that are a bit further ahead for you to get those processes uh, challenged, um, enhanced uh, and iterated as we go through this. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So to enable that, I'm going I'm to walk you through uh, this example and then we're going to get into, into workshop mode. So in, in this example that we have here, what we have are a delineated set of marketing and sales stages. Uh, th this is the generic, this is not the norm. So the norm will be whatever yours need to be, whatever you think they are. There is no template uh, that you should be using. There is no defined set of rules that you should be using. These can be whatever they need to be in your business. So in this example, what we have in marketing stages, we have four marketing stages. Uh, there's a, a first section which is around market positioning, definition and size. This is about understanding uh, what market you're engaged in, who your customer is. Uh, going and looking at what segment within that customer uh, base you're going to go and target and try and execute with. What's your value proposition? Has that been agreed and signed off? Uh, do we know what the price points are? What SKUs are going to be involved? Uh, and have we got the stuff lined up and ready to go? Uh, then what happens in the next stage is awareness, so the, the campaigns initially get out into the marketplace. For most of you, this will be digital centric. This will be you know, a, a number of different activities supporting digital campaigns. There might be some incremental above the line, uh, but primarily it'll be digital and below the line activity. Then when someone's expressed a level of interest, what do you do with them? Uh, they've responded to an email, they've clicked on a link, uh, they've, uh, they've read a blog and ready to go to trial, they've They've done what they've done, whatever that is in your business. Uh, they've clicked on a link for an ad, they've, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and then something happens in here. This is where uh, they turn into a marketing qualified lead. This is where someone looks at it and says, okay, so Harry's clicked on our link for um, buying fire extinguishers. Um, he's read the blog. He's asked for more information. What do we do with this? And somewhere along the way, either with machinery or by people, what happens is someone should match Harry's interest in fire extinguishers with what you're trying to achieve here. If someone went and Googled me, uh, they might or might not think that I'm a relevant person to try and sell fire extinguishers to. But like, don't try and sell me fire extinguishers if I'm a, I'm a student on a research project, uh, and don't try and sell me singular fire extinguishers if I'm the head of health and safety in Procter & Gamble. Don't try and flow me one fire extinguisher. You might want to approach me in a slightly different way. So either by machinery and profiling or by people-based activity, there's a final matching, which then hands it over, which in this model are called the sales stages, where it's handed over for marketing. Uh, someone now receives it. Sorry, what's your name? Daryl. Daryl? Yeah. Daryl or Daryl? Daryl. Daryl, thank you. Apologies. These are, you'd think they'd work the size of them. Uh, so what happens is that, that Daryl has been told by marketing that there's this guy, Harry, wants to buy fire extinguishers. Daryl's going to go, okay, this is in my patch. Uh, Harry's in Ireland, so yep, that's my gig. I sell fire extinguishers in Ireland. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now accept this from marketing. Thank you, marketing. You're very good. I appreciate that. Uh, I've looked at it. Yeah, this looks about right. Harry is, he's not an 18-year-old student uh, doing a research project on fire extinguishers. He's not the head of health and safety in Procter & Gamble. He fits somewhere within our sweet spot. I'm going to proceed with Harry. Okay, so what I'm going to do with Harry is I'm either going to send him some stuff I'm going to contact him. I'm going to outreach to him. It's going to be real, uh, people-based live chat rather than the, hi, I'm, I think Robert's the most commonly named uh, at the minute on the machine-based uh, live chat interaction. It's Robert, uh, it's Sarah, and I don't know who the third one was. Uh, so, so the machine-based stuff has names. It's not the real names. It's not who they are. Uh, but so in, in, a, in, a, in a live format, this will be where Daryl's going to um, have a chat with me about fire extinguishers. Um, He's then, gonna, he's then gonna work out what, what needs to happen next with Harry. He's gonna be following a process that's defined. So what the company will have worked out is that after I've expressed an interest, you're gonna do something else. 
you're going to demo me, you're going to pitch me an ROI, you're going to send me a sample, you're going to share with me a secret case study, you're going to do a demo, um, you're going to like give me a, a trial period, you're going to do something. Uh, at the next point in time, assuming I've completed those processes, you're going to do something else with me. You're probably going to start trying to close me around about here. You're going to try and start closing me around about here. You're going to start asking for the order. Uh, you're going to remind me what the price points are and the different ways to have it or the different colors I can have it in. I can have it in 16 different tones of red if I, if, if I want one. Uh, then you're going to close out the paperwork. Uh, yeah, Harry, we're done now. Thanks for that. Got your credit card. That's all done. We're shipping next week and we're going to bill you, whatever that happens to be. And then we're done. Hand it over to the customer care team. Okay? So in Daryl's example in his world where he's busily trying to flog fire extinguishers out the door uh, to people like me, there are a set number of processes that Daryl's going to follow once he's accepted a marketing qualified lead. Now, that example is a little bit simplistic. It talks about marketing, it talks about selling. It doesn't matter whether this is field sales or telesales. It doesn't matter whether this is all marketing and, and people-centric selling doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. It's what's right for your business. There is no one way to do this. So what I'd like you to do is get ready to uh, share with a colleague. The precursor to that will be, I'd like you to take five minutes or so and try and sketch out what you think the core processes are in terms of sales and marketing in your business currently. And what I'd like you to do in that is just to start with mapping out what are the activities that happen in those stages. Please no more than 10. I'm sure some of you will be fairly complex. Keep it less than 10. Five to seven would be a good suggested number. <laughs>